everyone. Welcome to Another Nightmare. I'm Danny. I'm Brian. This is the podcast where I tell my boyfriend stories about, you know, ghosts and haunted places and creepy stuff and aliens and whatever the fuck I feel like. Yeah. Because it's stuff we like. <laughs> well. Well. We're here again. What's today's episode? Today's episode. I wish we had a sponsor because that would have been perfect to be like, <laughs> today's episode is brought to you by... <laughs> 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 No, but today's episode is actually a listener requested episode. Yep. So we're going to be covering the King's Chapel burying ground in Boston, Massachusetts. Ooh. So to the person that requested this topic, you're welcome. (laughs) And thank you for the idea. I thought it was going to be a thank you. (laughs) I was unprepared. (laughs) All right. So let's dive on in because... This is going to be a long one. Great. All right. Cool, cool, cool. (laughs) So the King's Chapel Burying Ground is a cemetery or burial ground located in Boston, Massachusetts. It was founded in 1630 around the time of the settlement of Boston. Um, It is and it is uh, Boston proper's oldest burying place. Nice. So literally Boston's oldest cemetery. This is cool already. Yeah. I like cemeteries. Yes. Do you know the difference between a cemetery and a graveyard, real quick? Uh, nope. So, a graveyard has a church associated with it, whereas a cemetery does not. Oh, okay. This is something that I have learned, and that I struggle to remember. <laughs> oh, it's, you put it out there pretty well for me. I, was, I had no idea. I had to, like, relook it up, like, four times while researching this episode, because I kept forgetting. Hell yeah. But anyways... <laughs> So, like the majority of Boston's burying grounds, um, this burying ground has always been under municipal control, which means it's not affiliated with any church. So it's state-owned? Yes. Owned. Okay. So it's not, and that's why it's a cemetery, not a graveyard. Okay. Yeah. This is new. So the site is said to be part of Isaac Johnson's estate, who was an esteemed early settler. My oh, man. He um, is like the first person buried there because he requested to be buried in his pumpkin patch. Oh. And then once they buried him, they were like, let's just bury everybody here. <laughs> as soon as he did, he's like, no, my pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be a part of the pumpkins. <laughs> now everybody's going to be a part of the pumpkin. Uh. I'm the pumpkin king. You don't know that reference. Nope. So in 1668, Royal Governor Andros seized a portion of this property to construct the town's first Anglican church, which is King's Chapel, and it was built in 1688. Damn. It's a long time ago. So the existing stone stone structure of King's Chapel was designed by Rhode Island architect Peter Harrison and was completed in 1754. That's a while. Yeah. (laughs) The construction took place around the original wooden structure in order to continue holding worship. Okay. All right. The interior is considered to be the finest example of Georgian architecture in North America. Oh, wow. The bell of the church was forged in England in 1772 and was cracked in 1814. That's... So America has a wow. brilliant history of cracking bells. What are we doing here? Is... I, fucking up. It's the humidity. I don't know. <laughs> I, I no think idea. it's just that we're Americans and we are disrespectful assholes. Just pull on those strings super hard, bang those bells way harder than they were supposed to be banged. <laughs> bang it harder than it's supposed to? Yeah. I'm glad you caught up on that. <laughs> so it was actually recast by Paul Revere in 1816 and still rings to this day to summon people to worship. Good old Paul. Oh, yeah. He's going to pop up a couple of times in this story. <laughs> well, howdy doody. So the church also houses the oldest American pulpit still in continuous use. Sweet. Yeah. Boston, man. We got to go there one of these days. I want to go so bad. There's so much history there. I'd love to go to Beantown. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) So during the American Revolution, loyalist members of King's Chapel fled to Canada and the church's name was briefly changed, changed to Stone Chapel. 
Oh, okay. King's Chapel became Unitarian in 1785 under the ministry of James Freeman, who revised the Book of Cro- of Common Prayer to reflect the movement towards uh, Unitarian ideology. Okay. This book is currently on its ninth edition Whoa. and is still used at services today. Dang. Ninth edition. Right? History. That's... <laughs> History. <laughs> My good fellow. (laughs) Quite. (laughs) Quite. (laughs) Um, Notable King's Chapel members include several colonial royal governors. Dr. Oliver Wendell Holmes, Sr., architect of the Massachusetts State House and U.S. Capitol buildings, Charles Bullfinch, and Massachusetts Senator Charles Sumner. I may not have pronounced half of those names right. I like Bullfinch. It's a cool name. Bullfinch. I don't know if that's right, but... (laughs) Sounds good to me. Famous Americans who visited the chapel include George Washington, Abigail Adams, and Paul Revere. There's good old Paul. Sorry. The British are coming. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So this church is actually where the burying ground gain it, gains its name, even though it's not technically affiliated with the church. Originally, it was simply called the Burying Place, since it was the only cemetery in Boston for about 30 years. Nice. Then, in 1659, Copps Hill Burial Ground was established, followed by Granary Burying Ground in 1660. Since it was no longer the only burying place in Boston, the cemetery became known as the Old Burying Ground. It was officially given the name King's Chapel after the construction of the church was after the construction of the church was completed in 1754. Since it was near the burying ground, okay. So yeah, interesting. It was first called the Burying Ground, and then the Old Burying Ground. And then it got a proper name. (laughs) Because as we've discussed on this podcast previously, Americans are not creative with names. No. (laughs) We just take them all. Yeah. We either steal them or we give really stupid fucking obvious names. Moundsville. Gee. (laughs) (laughs) What do we call this place? Well, there's a shitload of mounds. You think of what I'm thinking? Yeah. We'll call it Charleston. Charleston. <laughs> I was not thinking that. All right. <laughs> so. It's way more creative. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so tradition holds that the first interment in King's Chapel burying ground was that of former owner of the property, Isaac Johnson, in 1630. Notables buried here include Massachusetts first governor John Winthrop, William Dawes, uh, which was Paul Revere's compatriot on his ride in ride to Lexington in 1775. We don't talk about him. William Dawes? <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know that Paul no. Revere had a companion. No, nope, I just learned. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, William. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. There is also the Reverend John Cotton, a powerful religious leader in the 17th century. Father Cotton. It's not. Okay, so this is a difficult name. Uh, Hezekiah Usher? Hezekiah Usher? Sure. Fuck. I don't know. I can't read it. Yeah, uh, (laughs) it's a weird name that I don't know how to pronounce. But this was the colony's first printer and publisher. So he's buried there. Uh, William Emerson, father of Ralph Waldo Emerson, is buried here. I know him. And Mary Ch- Chilton, who many believe was the first European woman to step off of the Mayflower, is buried there. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's very interesting. Right? A lot of, A lot of notable people. Notable historical figures have been put in the ground there. Yes. Not turned into trees. <sighs> <laughs> so the earliest graves and tombs were scattered randomly throughout the grounds with no formal pathways. Okay. All right. That's kind of the way that yeah. early cemeteries were. It was just you'd pick you a spot and bury a person. Throw them in there. Yeah. 
And then in the early 19th century, landscaped cemeteries outside of cities became the public parks of their time, and efforts were taken to beautify urban burying grounds. So they turned cemeteries into parks, basically? Just like, Essentially, like, just yeah. walk through parks? Yeah, okay. we'll talk about that in just a second, a little bit more. So pedestrian footpaths, an ornamental cast iron fence... And various plantings were all installed to enhance visitors' experience in King's Chapel burial ground. Okay. Efforts went so far as to rearrange the gravestones in straight rows, frequently not corresponding to the body buried underneath. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Even though there are, there are approximately a thousand people buried here, there are only around 500 headstones and 50 footstones remaining and only about 36 of the 78 tombs are marked. <laughs> Hell yeah. So let's go back to that Victorian remodel of cemeteries for a second. You got it. So during this era, era um, cemeteries were targets for prostitution, gambling, and of course, grave robbing. I did not expect prostitution. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really like, didn't. Because nobody really wanted to go to cemeteries because there was such that disconnect of life and death and people were like really afraid of death and they didn't, they saw it as very macabre and gross. Right. So people didn't want to go to cemeteries. It wasn't like now where, you know, you go and you visit your loved ones and shit like that. So the seedy underground would spill into the cemeteries and that was a popular breeding ground for prostitution like oh, because nobody's gonna bust you in there so of course you just take your john into the uh graveyard and nobody's <laughs> gonna fucking follow you like <laughs> so the space allotted for burials was also usually very small and heavy rain started to cause a lot of problems oh those heavy rains a lot of graves were only about two to three feet deep not so good <laughs> bodies would sometimes be unearthed and flow into a city's water supply causing illness Fuck yeah. This happened in New York City and became a major topic of discussion and a turning point for cemeteries. What are we going to do about the bodies floating in the reservoir? Let's leave them. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> They're not hurting anything, are they? <laughs> <laughs> you can't prove that that's where illness came from. God is mad at us. It comes from bad smells. <laughs> Duh. See, we're not getting sick because the body is there. It's just the smell of the body that makes us sick. Yeah. God, science people. <laughs> I wish that wasn't factually accurate. Uh, we were so good at science. For so long. <laughs> oh, man. It's it's kind of shameful how long it took us to figure this shit out. Yeah. <sighs> good to know the earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, what? Human beings have not believed that for centuries. I don't know. I don't understand what you're talking about. There's an ice ring that saves us. It, Mm-hmm. encapsulates us and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah and there's also a hollow realize. earth where hitler is riding dinosaurs and planning to take over the world again i've met him it's true yeah is he hanging out with penguins in antarctica no <laughs> uh, it's just a rumor that he started so that he could run away to argentina and live out his life and no no and die of his no, gross... No, he's in South Carolina. If he's still alive at this <laughs> point, I would be thoroughly impressed. Well, yeah. Because, like... There's no way. <laughs> plus, that would also mean that I would get to slap Hitler in the face, and do you know how satisfying what? that would how be? We, we're not going to South Carolina. I'm just saying. If he was alive to this day, I would go slap that bitch in the face. It's tangent. <laughs> <laughs> you, you started slap. it. My bad. So... Um, to combat the issue of bodies floating, which actually seemed to happen too much. Just a lot. Yeah, it was kind of gross. But to combat this issue um, and to also attempt to highlight death as a natural part of existence, cemeteries began transfor uh, being transformed to double as parks and gardens. This would also foster a more pleasant relationship between the living and the dead. So this is where the turn kind of came, where we started going back to cemeteries and um, visiting loved ones and, like, leaving flowers and 
you know, why a lot of cemeteries are like really nicely laid out and really nicely landscaped. And this was also around the time that um, lawnmowers were invented because before cemeteries were used as like open pastures for cattle to just roam through. Oh, shit. And that's how the grass would get cut in cemeteries is they would just let cattle go through there. And now we had a lawnmower, so now we were like, we need to organize these headstones so that we can get this machine through here to cut the grass. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so the Victorian era, bringing us real cool shit all the time. Wow. We got lawnmowers. (laughs) (laughs) So, two famous headstones at King's Chapel can still be seen today, and... They are of Joseph Tapping and Elizabeth Payne. So Joseph Tapping's headstone is located near the entrance. It depicts the constant struggle between life and death with the image of a skeleton trying to extinguish a lit candle and Father Time trying to preserve it. Ooh. Yeah, it's actually really interesting. I actually have a picture of this image from Joseph Tapping's headstone here. I want to show you it. So this is the skeleton trying to snuff out the candle and Father Time trying to stop him. But to me, it looks kind of more like that scene from the movie Ghost, you know? Oh, my love. Where he's like behind her and they're making the pottery and it's all romantic and pretty. (laughs) No, I have not seen that movie. (laughs) You know the scene, though. Everybody knows the scene. I do know the scene. scene. Yeah. I do know the scene. And I can definitely see that scene in the picture. Yeah. We're going to post this picture on Instagram so you guys can kind of take a look and judge for yourselves. It's like on... Death was about to do it. And then Father Time comes out of nowhere and just grabs his shoulders like, hey. Let me you, help you with that. You don't have to do this. <laughs> and then Death goes, you're so right. <laughs> But yeah, so I wanted to share that picture with you. And again, it'll be on our Instagram. Hell yeah. So you guys can all take a look and uh, see the romantic struggle between the... I really do like the depictions of death and father time. Yeah, um, and that was actually a huge thing with um, Puritan headstones because they didn't believe in the saints and they didn't believe in angels and depicting, you know, God or the angels was a sin so they got really creative with their headstones and they would depict things like skulls and skeletons and death and father time was a really popular one because it was a way of having that belief imagery in your headstone but not crossing that line of like angels and stuff like that they would also use um (laughs) they would also use like cherubs in there on their headstones and like it became like a huge um outlet for artists to create these headstones during the Puritan era. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. But anyways, so this famous image is said to represent the fleeting nature of life and humanity's imminent end. Ooh. Yes. Dark. <laughs> oh, once you think about it. But then again, Puritans were like that. They yeah. Were pretty dark and bleak, so. Yeah. And then Elizabeth Payne's gravestone is famous for inspiring Na- uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel, The Scarlet Le- Letter. I know that one. Her <laughs> headstone simply reads, quote, Here lies the body of Elizabeth Payne, wife to Samuel Payne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's said that he was inspired by this headstone to create the um, the main character of the Scarlet Letter and kind of based her around this idea, this headstone, right? And then he does actually, it's believed that there's a line in the book that mentions this headstone specifically because like just the description that he gives kind of mirrors the headstone of how it's simple and it's kind of sinking a little bit and stuff like that. So that's why Elizabeth Payne's headstone is famous. Because it's wow. linked to the Scarlet Letter. That's very interesting. Right? I did not know that. <laughs> so considering this is the oldest cemetery in Boston, and that most of the headstones are either missing or moved from their owner's graves, it shouldn't be surprising to hear that this place is haunted. Yes, the hauntings. <laughs> <laughs> Upon entering the grounds, many experience sudden chills. They also report hearing disembodied voices and being touched, grabbed, or pushed. Ick. 
fun times. Yeah. <laughs> Although identifying <laughs> all of the ghosts and entities behind these strange occurrences is pretty much impossible, there are a few a few that visitors report seeing and hearing time and time again. Okay, so there's some stragglers who like yes. to stay around for sure. Well, there's some famous spirits that are well Ooh, known. Some famous ghosties. Not necessarily famous in name, but son of a bitch, Dan. Famous in their haunting, they're seen a lot. Well, now I'm a fool. Other ones just like <laughs> to come up and shove you or touch you or whisper in your ear, but they don't. Yes, yes, yes. They, yeah, they're not as prominent or able to be seen often. Okay. Whatever. Anyways. Anyways. In the westernmost portion of the cemetery, there is a headless spirit of a woman reported roaming around. Oh. Oh. The legend behind this ghost is that the carpenter who was responsible for building her coffin had not measured correctly Son and made it too short for bitch. the woman. He was embarrassed by his blunder, and instead of building a new one, he cut off the head of the body, placing it between her legs, and nailed the lid on top to hide his mistake. Bruh. <laughs> this act of disrespect may have hindered the woman's journey to the afterlife, and now she is stuck in the graveyard, upset that her head was taken from her. Bruh. <laughs> Dude, who does that? Just fucking make a new cough. Oh. Right? Somebody's going to come along that's going to fit in that coffin. Just be like, hang on. I need like an extra day or two. I fucked up. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Bruh. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll cut her head off. You could have took the fucking leg. You could have like, took the legs from the knee. Come yeah, on. Yeah, you could have tucked her legs underneath her. You could have cut the legs off but no the head the head will do i'm just gonna cut the head and shove it between your legs it's yeah. all good i mean ghosts don't need legs they just float anyways <laughs> half the time they aren't seen with legs so just cut her legs off and Excuse she'll be me. like i don't need it anyway how do you know ghosts don't need legs <laughs> ghosts are often not seen with legs doesn't mean they're and not they using them they float maybe they're running through the air and that's how they float like little birds. They're yes, just like, they have to use their legs. And just, just kick them a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> they're just moving their feet so fast that they just look like they're yeah, gliding and floating. Yeah, exactly. Flooding. You don't even see the legs, but they're there. And just real quick tiptoeing like beep, 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 beep. <laughs> just make a bigger coffin. For fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> this will do. <laughs> I can just picture the carpenter like, oh, I really... Ooh, I'm just gonna head off. Fuck it. How do you jump to that though? Like for real? It's less work. I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so another local legend is that of a man being buried alive in the early 19th century. I hate that. Unfortunately, this is not as uncommon as we would like to believe. Yeah. Around this time, discoveries were being made all over England in very in a very brief six-month period of people having been prematurely buried. We were bad at it one time. Oh, yeah, really bad. <laughs> this became such an issue, in fact, that many new graveyard inventions came about to detect if, a, if someone had been buried alive so people could quickly exhume the poor person before they suffocated. Ugh. <sighs> Because, yeah, being buried alive is, like, one of my large fears. I wouldn't say it's my biggest fear, but it's definitely a large one because it's just that claustrophobic aspect of, like, being in the dark, being claustrophobic, slowly losing your air. Yeah. Fuck. It's rough. Uh, I don't like thinking about it. <laughs> but some of those inventions that they came up with are pretty fucking interesting, like, if you guys are interested, go look it up. I'm not going to dive into it here because there's a lot of them and they're really fascinating. <laughs> so in this story um, at King's Chapel, however, the man was not so lucky as to be saved. I did find two separate versions of what happened to this guy. The first one says that it was a simple mistake. And after hearing the stories of people having been buried alive... The family became concerned about their recently deceased relative and asked that the body be exhumed. The other version states that the family wanted the man's property, so they took it upon themselves to bury him. 
An elderly woman in the community was certain the family had committed this horrific deed and whipped up a group of locals to march to the cemetery to demand the grave be opened. Either way, the ending is the same. The body was exhumed and the the casket opened to reveal the horrifying truth. Truth. (laughs) I don't know why I had an F instead of I was going to let it slide. (laughs) Truth. (laughs) Tell Um, me the truth. (laughs) There were claw marks and the body had moved, showing the poor man had indeed been buried alive and later died from suffocation in the dark. See, he's just... Fuck. It's pretty scary shit. Really glad that doctors are now, like, pretty fucking certain. (laughs) (laughs) There was actually a really famous story from around this time that propped up in, oh, I think it was a Chicago newspaper of a woman that had been pronounced dead but she had that whole thing like where she was completely paralyzed and appeared dead, but she was conscious the whole time. She just couldn't move or blink or speak or any of that stuff. Okay. And so everybody huh. thought she was dead. So they were preparing Uh-oh. her for burial. And the whole time she's trying, struggling to be like, hey, I'm not dead. Hey, I'm alive. I'm not dead. But she couldn't fucking do anything. And it was like at the very last second. As they were, like, they had her in the coffin and they were, like, getting ready for her, like, funeral practices, somebody noticed there were beads of sweat on her forehead because her panic had become so great that oh my God. she was actually starting to perspire. So they were able to be like, holy shit, this, this chick's alive. And so they were able to save her the last fucking second. Oh, man. And it's stories like that terrifying. that, like, really started to get people, like exhuming loved ones that they were like wait a second we should double check yeah and then there's the whole thing of like you know you had the three-day waiting period before burying somebody and stuff like that and now you just really rough shit (laughs) now they're like very certain that you're dead yeah and generally you're embalmed so all of your fluids and stuff are taken out of you and there's no fucking (laughs) way you're surviving that so so if you weren't dead they're gonna kill you Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) So visitors to the cemetery now report hearing muffled screams coming from beneath the earth. (sighs) What's worse is that some report hearing multiple voices, which leads to the question, were there more people buried alive in this cemetery? I mean, why the hell not? Honestly, (sighs) there was probably at least a couple. If there's a thousand people there, there's probably at least a handful that were buried alive. Because medicine at that time was Great. not what <laughs> up to par. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> <sighs> Yay, heavy topics. <laughs> <laughs> so another famous fear, uh, spirit said to haunt King's Chapel burying ground is that of famous pirate Captain Kidd. At one point, Kidd worked for the governor to find and capture pirates. Later, he would be accused of the same crimes as the men he hunted down. Oh, no. (laughs) He was eventually captured in 1700 and held in a Boston jail, jail until he was extradited to England for his trial. There, he was tried, convicted, and hanged in 1701. The legend states that his body was returned to Boston for burial, and he was buried in King's Chapel burying ground, though this claim cannot be substantiated. Captain Kidd? Yes. I'm going to say fuck yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The one thing I don't understand is why I take him back to England to kill him and then take him all the way back to Boston, but I like it. Yeah, right? I mean, (laughs) we can say that he was brought back. (laughs) The other option is that he was just thrown into one of those fucking, like, pauper graves that they had in England for people that they hanged. and Yeah. You know, so why not just give him a better story? Why care about a pirate? Because pirates are amazing. (laughs) No, they're not. They're actually brutal, horrible people. But the stories of pirates is actually fascinating as fuck. (laughs) I was going to say, if you're making fun of Captain Hook right now, we're going to have words. Oh, Captain Hook is the biggest piece of shit ever. Get out. 
He's a dick. He got his hand eaten by an alligator. Have some sympathy. He's still a dick. He just wants friends. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Peter Pan is kind of the dick of the yeah. story, actually. Actually, no. Oh, my God. Tinkerbell is the biggest dick of that, that story. That bitch. Fucking <laughs> fuck Tinkerbell. <laughs> Anyhow, um, locals still tell tales of his spirit of the spirit of Captain Kidd haunting this cemetery. Oh, hell yeah. They say you should visit the burial ground at midnight on a night when the moon is dark. Then you should tap softly on one of the headstones three times and whisper, Captain Kidd, Captain Kidd, for what were you hanged? And Ooh. in the dark of the night, Captain Kidd will answer, nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> No, don't say that. That'd be creepy. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to go and try it. Yeah, me too. I would talk to a fucking pirate spirit. Yeah. It can. <laughs> <laughs> so the, for those interested in the Salem witch trials, this cemetery has some familiar characters interred within its grounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Major General Wait Still Winthrop... Grandson, Whoa. they were really terrible with names. <laughs> really bad. Um, he was grandson of the first governor of Massachusetts Bay Colony, John Winthrop. He was one of the nine magistrates who sat on the court of Oyer and Termner. I think that's how you say that. During the trials of 1692, and he was also on the superior court for the remaining cases in 1693. Damn. And he's buried here. My man. Thomas Brattle, a wealthy Boston merchant who was one of the most outspoken critics of the procedures during the trials, is also buried here. He wrote a letter on October 8th, 1692, arguing against the use of spectral, spectral evidence to convict those accused of witchcraft. And though it was not published until after his death, it is believed that it may have circulated in Boston and helped bring an end to the trials. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Someone that was trying to help. Yeah, somebody in that time that was like, what you're doing is horseshit. Yeah. And you need to stop. And it's all just bullshit. Yeah, this man is a fucking hero. Oh man. Um, the widow Mar Margaret Thatcher, one of the wealthiest people accused of witchcraft, is also buried here. She was probably a witch. In February 1692, she accused her servant, Bridget Denmark, of stealing five pounds worth of goods from her home. Denmark was sent to jail and later confessed to witchcraft. What the f- After her confession, she may have accused her employer of tormenting the afflicted. So they probably beat the shit out of her to get her to say that, right? Maybe, or maybe she was just pissed off at Thatcher for turning her in and was like, but she may have started this whole... Oh, my God. Well, okay. she didn't start the whole thing. It was just the accuse of Margaret okay. Thatcher okay. may have come from Denmark. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm caught up. <laughs> yeah. We will probably cover the Salem Witch Trials in more depth. I think we have depth. to. I think we're going to have to. It, it's, um, it's an interesting story. It's very it's sad up. and very yeah. sickening, but it's interesting. It piss me off, that's for sure. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, um, Thatcher was never arrested, and some speculate it may be because her daughter was married to Salem magistrate Jonathan Corwin. Connections. Yeah. Motherfucker. She, so, Margaret Thatcher was, like, a rich bitch. <laughs> Plus, she had connections to Corwin, so either one of those is why she wasn't actually arrested. Okay. So, that does cover... Uh, the the king's yes the king's the chapel king's chapel burying, burying grounds. grounds you got it <laughs> I lost track of what I was doing for a second <laughs> what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> um but that's the story of this burying ground but I do want to take a moment to explore the other two cemetery cemeteries that we mentioned at the top of the episode cemetery. <laughs> shut up I'm sorry why do you always gotta make fun of me because if someone doesn't. I might have good self-esteem. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so in 
So we're going to talk about Copps Hill and Granary burying grounds. Okay. Um, they may not be. They may not have as many notable spirits lurking around, but they do have reports of hauntings and are two of the oldest cemeteries in the U.S. All right, let's get it. So Copps Hill. Copps Hill is Boston's second oldest cemetery, established in 1659 as a result of a surge in population in the North End area. The city purchased a large area of land and designated designated it as the North Burying Ground. Again, not good with names. Nope. <laughs> the name was later changed to Copes. It's either <laughs> Copps or Copes. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, people of Boston. I'm not hey. sure. Um, <laughs> but it was later changed to, we'll say, Copes Hill after William Cope, who was an esteemed shoemaker in the area. A shoemaker? Shoemaker. Huh. <laughs> With, esteemed at that. Yes. So he made very fancy shoes. He made nice shoes for the fancy rich people. With the biggest buckles. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Uh, with land taken from Cups Hill um, for early 19th, 19th century construction projects around the city, the once peaking summit was eventually flattened. Okay. This, of course, affected the soil's drainage and caused erosion, which caused the he headstones to sink into the ground, giving the already frightening cemetery the appearance appearance of being swallowed by the depths of the <laughs> earth. <laughs> We're good at things. Creepy as fuck. <laughs> That's cool as hell. Oh, man. I remember going to the Salt Lake City Cemetery when I was in, like, high school and stuff. And you could find some pretty old headstones there, you know, and it was really cool to see those. But, like, imagine going to, like, these cemeteries and seeing these, like, super, super old Like, way headstones. older. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool. I want to plus years older. I want to go check it out. And then of course you could go to fucking Europe and see even older <laughs> cemeteries. Like it's just fascinating. So interesting. Um during the British British occupation of Boston in the What? No, sorry, I'm just fucking. In the Revolutionary War, <laughs> they used the grounds for the panoramic panoramic view of the harbor. Okay. While there, they used the headstones as target practice, Damn. showing a complete disregard for the dead. Oh, fuck. Those uh, British bastards. Oh, no, res <laughs> no respect at all. But then again, the American side didn't have the have respect for shit either. So, like... It's just people. It's just it's, humans. It's not different countries or nations. It's people. No, it's like the story of Napoleon when he was in Egypt shooting the nose off the Sphinx. I mean... That son of a bitch. You didn't tell me that. I didn't know about that. You didn't know about that? I'm not smart. Supposedly, that's why the Sphinx is missing its nose is because Napoleon took his, when he took his forces into Egypt, they used I, the Sphinx face as target practice. I thought. I don't <sighs> think it's true, but that's like the story. <sighs> he took his forces into Egypt? I don't know. <laughs> like, that's the part I'm blown away. Like, he crossed the med. What? I I'm pretty it was sure just he did. I thought it was just Europe. I'm, I don't know. I'm a different story for another time. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I, I specialize more in ancient history. Yeah. So. so. Anyways, back to this. Um, one of the headstones most defaced with British bullets was that of Captain Daniel Malcolm, a Son of Liberty member. Oh. So, of course, they used his headstone yeah. because it straight Pieces up said a member, a, a Son of Liberty. Sons of Liberty. Yeah. So, of course, they were like, fuck this guy. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is also a large number of free and enslaved African Americans buried in the cemetery. Many of these graves are unmarked since they were usually marked with wooden markers, which quickly deteriorated. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, only white people were allowed to have stone headstones. <laughs> Fucking dicks <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> it is believed that by the start of the revolution more than a thousand freed and enslaved black people were buried in the westernmost side of the cemetery 
However, most of them had to be moved when the city began construction on Snow Hill Street. The bodies were exhumed and reinterred in other areas of the cemetery, often without grave markers. Because, of course, why? <laughs> Every time we move bodies, we're like, oh, they don't need headstones or anything. <laughs> Haunting 101. <laughs> nah, we'll reuse that stone somewhere else. Don't worry about it. God. Uh, we never learn. <laughs> there are some famous headstones to check out if you ever find yourself at uh, Copes Hill Burying Ground. Um, the Mather family tomb, which houses the remains of infamous Puritans and Salem witch trial witnesses, increase in cotton matter. Mather. Oh, cotton. Cotton. <laughs> There's also the children's tomb which was used to store the remains of infants who passed away before they could be baptized. Ah. Yes, the unbaptized babies. They all know where they went. No, no, not okay. To Hershey Park? <laughs> For free chocolate? Yes, definitely. Yes. That is where all of them go. Yes, that's where all unbaptized babies go, is Hershey Park for free chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it's way better. I like that a lot. Uh, there is also the headstone for Robert Newman, the man who hung the church signal lanterns for Paul Revere on the night of his midnight ride. My man. <laughs> Notable poet Phyllis Wheatley, the first African-American to be published, is buried here, as well as Black, Free Black Freemason Masonry, that's a hard word, Freemasonry founder, Prince Hall. You did it. Yay. <laughs> Witnesses have reported... Wait, wait, hold on. Was his name Prince? Prince Hall, yes. Okay, all right. Yep. Just wondering. Witnesses have reported strange lights and noises coming from the cemetery. Ugh. People living in the nearby apartment buildings have heard everything from muffled cries to painful groans. There are also two figures in the cemetery known for their loud, jarring voices. All right. The Mathers. <laughs> okay, all right. If there's a grave that we need to pee on. <laughs> <laughs> Increase has been said to torment visitors with the same intensity he displayed throughout his life. Hmm. So what he's a being nice a guy. dick. Yeah. <laughs> Cotton, on the other hand, is believed to be visited frequently by the witches he helped identify and convict, <laughs> explaining why many claim to hear his late night e uh, exhibitions of sorrow. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so one's a bitch in the sense that he's just an asshole. And <laughs> the other's a off. bitch in the sense that he's like, when did I do it? I'm pissed off when I was alive. I'm pissed off now. No different. <laughs> Gosh. So Granary Burying Ground is the third oldest cemetery in Boston. It was established in 1660 after King's Chapel had reached capacity. It nice. was originally called South Burying Ground, but was later renamed after the adjacent grain storing building in 1737. <laughs> Again, the creativeness <laughs> of the naming. <laughs> we can't just keep calling it South. What's, what should we call it? It's oh, not there, even that South. <laughs> there's a granary over there. We'll just call it granary. Oh my God. Day done. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Damn. Uh, Damn So good The cemetery accepted new burials For over 200 years The last, last of which took place In 1880 There are an estimated 5,000 remains buried At Granary wow. But yet again Less than half the gravestones remain An estimated 5,000? That's yeah, a lot That's a lot of that's, bodies wow. But we have no way of knowing unless we dug up that many. Yeah, that's why it's estimated. Yeah. But yeah, again, there's less than half of the gravestones still. In January 2009, a previously unknown crypt was discovered when a woman touring the graveyard fell through the ground into what appeared to be a stairway leading to an underground tomb. That's a fun time. Not at all. <laughs> 
This tomb is believed to belong to Boston Mayor Jonathan Armitage, who died in 1751. That's very interesting. Yeah, so this thing was lost for a while. A long time. <laughs> and this this poor woman just touring around, you know, do, 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 seeing do. the sights, just fucking crashes Push. through. Ah! It's the stairwell to hell. <laughs> Bro. That's my first thought. <laughs> yeah. I would be like, apparently I died and I'm going to hell now. So I cool. stumbled upon something I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin Franklin's parents are buried here. Huh. Their graves are marked with a large marble obelisk because of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> A second obelisk near the back of the cemetery belongs to John Hancock, whose signature is found on the Declaration of Independence. What? Sorry. (laughs) Two other signers of this famous document are interred here as well, Samuel Adams and Robert Treat Payne. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Why is it called Granary? (laughs) Because there was a Granary. It's ridiculous. (laughs) But there was a granary. <laughs> you expect us to it's... spend ten minutes thinking of a name when there's a gr- perfectly good granary right there? <laughs> I was hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I was horribly wrong. <laughs> no, granary cemetery is fine. I want to get to the local pub to have some ale, so we're just going to fucking call it granary. <laughs> And be done with it. (laughs) The day is over. (laughs) Uh, This cemetery is also home to the remains of Paul Revere and the 1770 Boston Massacre victims. This is a very interesting graveyard or cemetery, whatever, burying ground. There's like a bunch of people that... Yeah. Did some things. Yeah. This is the third oldest cemetery in... Boston. It's and probably one of the oldest in New England. Yes. That's freaking awesome. All three awesome. of these are. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, they were very old. All were established in the 1600s. I bet you they're spooky. Oh, I bet you they're spooky as fuck. Spooky, spooky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so visitors to Granary report the usual foreboding feelings and finding orbs in their photos taken here. Hell yeah. <laughs> the famous haunting for this cemetery, however, falls to a prominent Boston lawyer, James Otis Jr. Otis had a bottle broken over his head during a bar fight, and this affected his mental health. Oh. His brain functions became impaired, and he became severely depressed. Legend states that he wrote a letter to God begging to be struck by lightning. Later, oh, no. he was struck by lightning God. while at home and died instantly. His body was interned in granary, and he now appears to visitors during both day and night dressed in his Colonia era clothing. This is insane. Right? You got what you wanted. Don't fucking haunt the grounds. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so these are the oldest cemeteries wow. in Boston. This is so cool. And I'm super excited that we had this suggestion to look into um, King's Chapel because it led me to these other ones and all this crazy history of yeah. like, I'm, but I mean, if you think about Boston, it's, it's in that, it's in all of that. It's in the, you know, the founding of the country. It's in, you know, the revolutionary war. It's goes back to the Puritans and yeah, the it's witch got, trials it's and a, all of that stuff. It's crazy. This is really cool. There's yeah. A bunch of different people throughout history buried there. We totally need to go to Boston. We've been saying that for a while. We've been saying that for a long time. God dang no damn. <laughs> well, thanks for telling me about all these cemeteries. Yeah, super fun, Places right? Places that I want to go visit now, dang it. Right. Be super cool. I want to give a shout out to my buddy for giving me the idea. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, friend. <laughs> I had a really fun time looking this up, actually. Hell yeah. The history part is just. Yeah, it's really cool. Fascinating. Yeah. That's why we do that. That's why we do history and spooky things. Yeah. Two of my favorite subjects mashed into one. <laughs> That's a mashing sound. 
Well, all right. So we didn't get another listener story this week, unfortunately. Yeah, we're back to it. Still, thanks to uh, last week's listener for that story. Still super happy. Yes. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Very good first story. The rest of you, please, please, please send us some stories. Uh, don't turn down my mic. <laughs> no, you can turn it down. I might yell. Yeah. Because you're about to tell me some spooky stories, right? Yeah. So we want to do my spooky tales, right? Yeah, because I've been saying a bunch of them. So it's yeah. your turn. All right. I so your spooky stories. I actually have one that takes place in a cemetery. <laughs> Sorry, I threw up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, me... My mom, my aunt, my grandma, and a friend of my mom and my aunt, um, we used to like to go around, like, ghost hunting. Like, yeah. Like, we would go to creepy places and just, like, see what there was to see and, like, take pictures and stuff like that. And we thought we were super cool. It was so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, there was this cemetery that we liked to go to um, called the Copperton Cemetery. The Copperton? Yeah. That's not a bad name. Yeah, well, it's right. <laughs> it's with the um, copper mine. Never mind. So it's <laughs> it's the Copperton Copper Mine. The town is Copperton. It's the Copperton Cemetery. Everything's based on copper. Ugh. But anyways, so this is an old cemetery because, you know, it's there for the copper mine and stuff like that. And there's some spooky shit in this cemetery. All right. So... When you drive up to the cemetery, like literally we drive up there at night and you can see orbs just oh, wow. with your naked eye out in in the cemetery, just floating above the headstones and shit like that. You could take pictures and get tons of them and shit like that. <sighs> and the thing is, is like you could try to sit here and be like, oh, you're just seeing fireflies. Well, in Utah, there are no fire fireflies. Never once ever saw fireflies in Utah the whole time that I lived there. Okay. Also, they were like purple, blue, green, red, white. Mm. They were all sorts of colors, all sorts of sizes. Really cool shit. So we like to go to this place. And my mom has other creepy stories from this place. Um, but this one that I'm going to tell stands out to me because it's one of the creepiest things that I ever experienced catching on camera. Okay. And it was horrifying. Ooh. So we decided not to go into the cemetery this night for whatever reason. We just kind of pulled off the road and parked next to the cemetery. And in front of the cemetery, there was this huge tree. And so we kind of pulled up next to the tree and then we pulled a little bit in front of the tree so the tree was like right behind us right behind our car so that we could look into the cemetery and see what we could see you know and we were watching the orbs and stuff and we were my aunt was in the passenger seat and she was taking pictures out the window and at the time my mom had a chrysler pacifica so it had the three rows of the three rows of seating Right. Mm -hmm. So my mom was driving. My aunt was in the passenger seat. Their friend and my grandma were in the second row of seating. And I was in the way back back by myself okay. next to the tree. So as we're sitting there, I kind of got this weird sense of like something being by the car. Oh, shit. So I told Tina, I was like, hey, take a picture over by the tree. So she sticks the camera out the window and she snaps a picture. And then immediately she's like, I think we need to go. <laughs> and my mom's like, what? What's going on? And everybody's like, what's happening? And my aunt was just like, we need to, we should go. We should leave. Let's go. And so we leave and then we're talking about it and stuff. And when we get back to the house, we're looking at the pictures and sure as shit, the picture that my aunt took of the tree. So there's the big, huge tree, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And next to the tree is this creepy, weird shadow thing. Oh, no. And it's like this humanoid shadow that's kind of, it looks like <laughs> it's kind of crouching and then leaning to look around the tree to look at us. And it's so, I have chills just remembering <laughs> it. I wish I had this picture. 
Seriously. to share Fuck. with you guys on Instagram, but we I don't have this picture. I don't have access to get this picture. But it was just so creepy and so unsettling to look at that picture and to see that. And my aunt is like, seriously, I thought I saw that thing. And that's why I was like, we need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so she took the picture and she also may have seen it. Yeah. Like, oh, God. And it was and it's just super staring creepy. at you. Yeah. Just like, what are you doing? And, like, that's, it may have been a shadow person because, like, that's the thing with shadow people is, like, sometimes they're, like, kind of crouching, looking around something at you. Ugh. And, I, you no, know. I'm getting the chills. Yeah, and they have that sense of being able to look at you and things like that. Super scary and super unsettling. <laughs> uh, freaked me out so bad. Dang. And then I also have another story that kind oh my of God, relates. Is it, is it another one. Um, this is another camera freaky story okay so i mentioned the time that i was chased away from something right what <laughs> yeah no I've yeah, heard, yeah in that one episode i mentioned that um so that's this story so in utah there's a town called lehigh and if anybody has seen the movie footloose with kevin bacon you know lehigh oh shit because it was filmed there they use the Lehigh Roller Mill. That's where he goes and he does his like anger dance You're and serious? stuff like that. Yeah, hundred percent serious. Of course, the movie Footloose would be based in Utah. Oh yeah, <laughs> in the town of Lehigh. You don't get to dance. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Utah. <laughs> so they filmed that movie there. The Lehigh Roller Mill, super popular, super well known. Well, there's also the Lehigh Hospital, which. Ooh. Is a really creepy old building. Hospitals always are. Why aren't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the legend behind this hospital was that the doctor was a Dr. Death type character who murdered dun, his dun, patients dun. and stuff. And the legend states that he was confronted by a nurse either because she got on to him that he was killing his patients or because they had had a fair and she had gotten pregnant. So she wanted him to do something about it. it it was either one of those either way he strung her up from the flagpole and killed her fucking a yeah and so he was a super crazy asshole lunatic good times <laughs> so again we you know it's the same crew it's my mom my aunt their friend my grandma and me Hella good crew. Strong crew. Yeah. So we go out to Lehigh. We go to this hospital. Well, they had put up a huge chain link fence around the hospital, so we couldn't Beasties. get in. So we were sitting there across the street um, trying to figure out what we were going to do. And while everybody was kind of talking about it, I was staring intently at the um, third floor windows of the hospital because I felt like something was like watching me. And I was getting really creeped out by it. So I decided to go ahead and take a picture. And instantly, <laughs> I was filled with such dread and anger and hate that I was like, <laughs> we have to leave right now. <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me. And like, I just had this sense of like, Something screaming at me and pushing me of like, get the fuck away from me. Get out of here. Go away. And so we kicked it into gear and we drive away. And I swear to God that it fucking followed me until we got onto the freeway. Once we got onto the freeway and were for sure headed back towards Salt Lake City, the feeling left me. But it followed me all the way from the fucking hospital to the freeway being like... Sounds like some dark fucking energy. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it seriously... I was afraid it was going to fucking come home with me. Because yeah. I could feel it on me of just, like, pushing me and being pissed off and being like, you get the fuck out of here. You Leave me alone. You fucking worthless piece of shit. You can't dance here! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Damn it. That's what it was. <laughs> was it the doctor? It was the priest. Oh, no. <laughs> that's really spooky, though, to have just that weird feeling and then just have that yeah. like, thought of, like, someone screaming at you. Yeah, Ugh. it was super, 
super weird and unsettling and I fucking, I hated it. I didn't get anything in my picture of the hospital. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just thought that those two stories kind of, you know, coincide because it's both creepy pictures of taking a picture of something and then being like, we need to leave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's time to go. Well. So yeah, that that's, was... that's some of my creepy stories. That's pretty creepy. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So, if you guys would like us to feature your creepy personal experiences Please. on the podcast, you can always send us your stories. You can send us an email at another nightmare pod at gmail.com. It's all one word another nightmare pod at gmail.com. I'm begging you. And if you don't want your name included, you can always, you know, state that at the top of the email. Be like, hey, I don't want my name attached to this. You know, we can either come up with an alias or refer to you as this person. You know, we're more than willing to do that. We just want to hear your guys' creepy tales. And it can be anything from haunted stuff to aliens to cryptids to, I don't know, something just crazy unexplained that. Weirded you out, creeped you out. You know, we just like to hear these stories. And we want to share them with everybody and build a community off of this podcast. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's our episode this week. Sorry it's a little bit shorter than it has been the last couple of weeks. But, you know, whatever. We do what we can. Darn it. <laughs> Shoot. Shit. Haha. <laughs> 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 All right. So, of course, you guys can um, follow follow us on. Uh, if I it. could speak, you guys can always follow us on social media. We have Instagram, Twitter. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. You can just search another nightmare podcast and we'll come up on any of those. You got all the things. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Ofakya. That's O F A K Y A. Um, anywhere you could think to look me up, I'm at, oh, fuck yeah. Um, you don't have to follow me, though. I don't really post anything. I'm going to try to get into it, but I always forget. <laughs> <laughs> Why to be honest, Danny? Why yeah. to be honest? Yeah. But anyways, um, our intro music was, of course, by our good friend, Rob. Good old Rob. Um, you can find him on Instagram at insert nickname, um, he has an album coming up, A Myriad of Mayhem. And yeah, just go check him out because he's a great artist and a good friend of ours. And we're really happy with our intro that he made us. And it's super cool and fun and creepy. <laughs> Thanks, Rap. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well. Do we have anything else that we need to shout out? Fuck no, we're done here. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, on that note, we'll see you guys next week. See you next time. Bye. Bye.